Wonderful. We're live now on Facebook. I'm Natasha Rapazzo. I'm coming at July from Dallas, Texas, and I'm here with my wonderful colleague, Nancy Mencias, who's coming to us live from Greece. Nancy, how are you today? <laughs> I'm, I'm great, and I'm so happy to be with you and to talk about BlackRock today. Yes, we are talking about BlackRock. As anyone who follows us on any social media knows that we are going hard at BlackRock. We've been targeting them since the beginning of the month of the year. And I'm wondering if you could just explain to anyone who's joining us what BlackRock is and why we are targeting them. Yeah, so BlackRock is kind of new on the scene for us. They are the top investor in weapon manufacturers such as Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics. They are also the largest asset manager in the world. Um, so without getting too uh, wonky around uh, Wall Street, so they control about tr $5 trillion in assets. Um, and BlackRock has been described as the world's largest shadow bank. And they own the iShares franchise of investment funds as well as other investment vehicles. So um, just a little background. So iShares is one of the fastest growing um, investment vehicles in the world. During the first quarter of 2018, shareholders uh, were update. Um, BlackRock highlighted that the iShares franchise is how their business is booming. So one of their iShares funds is exclusively dedicated to de defense spending. In other words, they are funding exclusively um, on uh, weapons of war. That's what I find really interesting is that they call themselves socially responsible, yet they have millions of dollars invested in weapons manufacturers. So why are they allowed to call themselves socially responsible? How can they keep doing this and getting away with it? Oh my goodness. So this is a real sort of bee in our bonnet. So. In a public statement, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink announced that he was going to start holding, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but he was going to start holding companies um, they invest in accountable for being uh, responsible corporate citizens. His statement made huge waves in the investment and business world. However, a statement for accountability rings hollow while BlackRock continues to profit off of uh, the most morally corrupt companies in the world. So just to highlight how much black, um, how much money BlackRock has invested in weapon manufacturer, manufacturers, let's look at their investments in the top five. They have over seven billion in Boeing, three billion General Dynamics, five billion in Lockheed Martin, three billion in Northrop Grumman, and four billion in Raytheon. That's really not socially responsible, is how I would put it. Right. So we've been going after them since like February, what's, mm -hmm. how would you, what would you call our long-term goal? What's the goal with BlackRock? What are we going to get them to do? Well, that's a really good question. So um, BlackRock, we're asking them that they, they must divest from and stop investing in companies that sell weapons used in war and violence around the world. And even here at home, um, BlackRock must divest from defense contractors that also profit from child detention. Um, and what BlackRock does, is they provide a pathway to invest in defense contractors that profit from child detention and weapon manufacturers that produce tools and weapons for war and violence in Palestine, Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan, and countless other areas where the U.S. is active in conflict. And the result of all this is, is the loss of innocent lives and turmoil around the world. So the sale of US weapons to oppressive re regimes like Saudi Arabia is a shining example of how the products made by these companies are not responsible, uh, socially responsible or beneficial to the global community. So we've been really, I feel like, bothering BlackRock a lot. We've been outside their offices. We've been at their shareholders meeting. I've gone to the office in Dallas four times. The last time I was there, they were like, how did you get up here? We told security not to let you up here. They they know my face. They know my name. And I, it's probably the same for you because you've been to the BlackRock in San Francisco, I think, four times. You organized the protest outside the shareholders meeting. So tell everyone watching a little bit about these actions we're doing outside their office and what we're accomplishing by delivering these petitions and being really, really bothersome. 
Yeah, so you're right. We've been outside of their office. Um, you know, we started in, uh, I think, in the end of March, um, and we had demonstrations in LA, San Francisco, uh, Dallas, like you said, New York, and Princeton, New Jersey. They have a big uh, complex there. So um, not only is it important to have an online campaign presence, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but it's also important to have that outside presence. And, you know, Code Pink, you know, we're known for, uh, for showing up and getting in their faces. So having that street heat and that outside presence is, is just as important. Um, so, you know, BlackRock on the surface, it paints itself as this ideal investment firm. Um, it's invested in its stakeholders. They say they provide non-toxic work environment and create shared values. But underneath all that public relations, that PR, BlackRock washes over its responsible investing in sustainable platforms. And it continues to invest in um, weapon manufacturers. Have you had any interesting experiences when you've been outside of BlackRock office? Do you have any fond memories of... Um engagement uh, an employee <laughs> yeah so definitely um so you know i can just kind of give an example um you know when we had our protests on march 26 um security showed up at all our protests and i think they showed up at yours too so um in la uh blackrock they put up a security barricade uh, around this 40 story building to avoid like these three fierce peace activists. It was so silly. And in San Francisco, we had, it wasn't security, it turns out. It was like a VP of BlackRock who came out and he talked to us and he shook our hand and he was very nice. But for some reason they have um, their finger on the pulse and I wouldn't be surprised if they're listening today. Um, but they know, they're on the up and up and they know um, what we're doing and um, what our next move is, which is kind of scary. But, um, you know, they have on their website, they have listed a Washington, D.C. office. And we were hoping to do a protest out, outside of their D.C. office, um, but they moved it. And when we contacted them for the new address, BlackRock responded, we don't give it out. I mean, it's baffling how Larry Fink and BlackRock, the here, this multi-million dollar firm, are so frightened of this small women's peace organization. I agree with you. I, when you know, when you talk to them at the office, they all, they kind of like shoo me away. They're like polite and respectful, but then when I went, I, this was like the third time I went. They were like, "Okay, we'll take this letter. We'll read it." We go downstairs, do our protests. We have the cops called on us from Black Rock. They're talking to the people at the front desk. They're like, there are these three women downstairs. We don't know what they're going to do. We don't know what they're planning. And I was like, I'm just going to stand here and hand out this postcard. I'm not planning anything bad. They're like a little scared and they shouldn't be scared. They should just divest from war and we'll leave them alone. I know. We, t we asked for a meeting with them, with Larry Fink or even, you know, even his like assistant or Someone at the front does, just someone to meet with us um, to talk about it. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, I delivered a letter, just like you did, to San Francisco. And Mr. Via, who was the VP, he came out and he was really nice and accepted my letter. And he didn't like the fact that I was on Facebook Live. Um, so he kind of huff and puff and took my letter and left. Well, then the week after I went and I delivered the petition with over 3,000 signatures and then he was really receptive and nice and he, uh, but he was eager to just sort of shoo me out of the building like he was talking to me, but talking and walking me out the door at the same time, <laughs> which is an art in itself. Um, so yeah, it's been really interesting, but I, I don't understand why they don't, they don't want to just sit down and talk to us. If they would just sit down and talk to us, we wouldn't have to go bother them every <laughs> month like we do, or sometimes twice a month, <laughs> like we just have. Um, right, right. So let's talk about this guy. Not just this guy, but this lovely postcard we have. It's directed to Larry Fink. I've been handing them out in Dallas. I go to the train station, I hand them out to people, and I just actually last time I went I just like left a few scattered like in the front of the office as a little like wink to the BlackRock employees but 
we have this wonderful postcard campaign going on. Do you want to talk a little bit about this and Mr. Larry Fink? Yeah, absolutely. So we're kind of ripping a page out of the re uh, Rainforest Action Network um, action book. And uh, we've launched a postcard campaign and the postcards go directly to Mr. Fink's house because um, that's what we're about. We're about getting in their faces and it's requesting that uh, he and BlackRock divest from the war. Um, and the postcards have been a real hit. It's been amazing. We have members of our group in Code Pink who are talking about having postcard writing campaigns. So now that we have his address, we can just have these um, kind of kitchen table postcard parties and just mail them off to him. Actually, we've already done some of that. So um, some of them have probably already reached his residence. I hope he's reading them. And if anyone watching wants to get their own postcards, they can go to codefink.org slash Larry Fink. The whole mm -hmm. letter to Mr. Fink is there. You can send that out and send it to him or contact anyone at Code Pink. We will gladly send you some postcards because there is a BlackRock office probably near you. There are many of them. You can get involved. You can do an action. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the wanted poster that's like sitting right behind your shoulder. Wanted for Larry Fink. Where have we been putting those up? Because those have made it around town, haven't they? Yeah, well, the posters are really get great. And we have this amazing designer in Canada who put it all together. And it just says Larry Fink wanted um, CEO BlackRock for investing in millions in the war machine, complicity, complicit in environmental destruction and holding shares in gun companies. And they've been in Palo Alto, they've been in Dallas, they've been in San Francisco, LA, and all over New York. I'm in Greece right now doing humanitarian work, and I understand BlackRock has an office in Athens, so I plan to deliver one of these fabulous posters to the Athens Greece office um, sometime soon. So yeah, they they're getting all they're getting out all over the world because BlackRock is all over the world. It is. That's amazing. I didn't know they had an office in Greece. I'm so happy that you're going to bug them even there. Um, so we've been targeting a lot of different people because it's not just BlackRock. It's people that have ties to BlackRock because they're, if you work with BlackRock, that means you're also investing in war. That's just how it works. So who are the latest targets on our campaign? Because this is a long campaign. We have long-term goals. We're targeting lots of people to get everyone to divest from war. Yeah, well, so to really, well, one of the uh, tactics to create change is um, to reach out to uh, possible shareholders. So we have uh, two shareholders of Black, BlackRock that we are um, right now actively engaging in. So we have Thrivent, uh, which is a Christian, specifically Lutheran investment firm, and we've sent them a letter explaining um, our BlackRock campaign and why uh, BlackRock's values uh, differ from um, Thrivent and the Lutherans. Uh, and then we're also looking at Amalgamated Bank. Amalgamated is probably one of the most progressive banks in the, in the US. It's dedicated to ethical values and responsibility. Um, on their website, they even have a statement about not lending or investing in weapon manufacturers. So they're totally in line with, um, with our values at Code Pink and with our um, Divest from the War Machine campaign. And what's interesting is Amalgamated is a certified B Corp. And so they can really influence change by continuing to use its collective voice um, as a force for good. And Right now, it's exciting because we are in talks with Amalgamated and things are looking really good and really possible for them to divest from the war machine. That's really exciting. I hope yeah. they do the best. I think they're a very movable target. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is just now joining us on wonderful Facebook Live, I'm Natasha. And I'm here with my colleague, Nancy. We're talking BlackRock and divesting from war, yes. Mm -hmm. If you follow us on Facebook, you know right now we are talking a lot about Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, and how he's actually going to be awarded a humanitarian award by the International Rescue Committee, Committee IRC for short. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I'm confused by that. You're confused by that. Let's talk about it. Who is yeah. Larry Where? Why is he getting a humanitarian award? Why, oh, why? Yeah, so Larry Fink is the CEO of BlackRock. And um, IRC, for some of you who don't know, is the International Rescue Committee. 
and they do incredible work to support migrants and refugees. I'm currently here in Greece working at a refugee camp and I get to see firsthand the work that they are doing um, in one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. I mean, they do fantastic work. And so we're concerned over Larry Fink receiving IRC's John C. Whitehead Humanitarian, Humanitarian Award. It's, it's really maddening because Larry Fink continues to profit from war, weapons, and violence. And we are asking IRC to reconsider honoring this war profiteer uh, with a humanitarian award. Um, so the two leading contributors to the global refugee crisis are climate change and war. And so rewarding Larry Fink for profits from weapons and violence while the IRC is seeking to assist people impacted by wars really undermines um, the value of their work. And it's just, it's really maddening, especially to see um, them working here with war refugees in, um, in Greece. So it, that's all I have to say. It's, it's just maddening. It really is. It's really sad that he's going to get, he might get this award. Mm -hmm. for not really doing anything for a humanitarian cause, just mm -hmm. having money, basically. But um, mm -hmm. it, we are having, we have a letter right now that we're sending to the IRC asking them to rescind this award. You can go to codepink.org slash IRC. I'll put the link in the comments below. But send a letter to the IRC, tell them to consider rescinding this award, not honoring Larry Fink. They should divest from war, just like we talked about. And so we talk about how war is a huge cause of the migrant crisis. Let's mm -hmm. talk about how BlackRock is invested in General Dynamics, who is currently profiting off child detention going on at the border right now. Yeah, oh my gosh. So it just we just keep piling on, piling on. <laughs> when you start pulling back the layers of this stinky onion. Um, <laughs> so um, just a reminder that BlackRock has stakes in weapon companies such as General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Raytheon. General Dynamics is a prime example of a company profiting from those who are suffering. This military contractor, some of you may remember them from Iraq, from the Iraq war. Um, they've taken a government contract to provide social services to migrant children How that U.S. detention counts. So when you think about someone providing social services to migrants, what do you think of? You think of a church, you think of a NGO, of a nonprofit. You don't think of a war profiteer. So um, General Dynamics is, has provided weapons to Saudi Arabia, Israel, Iraq, Turkey, and has directly benefited from the US invasion on Iraq. BlackRock owns more than 16 million shares of General Dynamics stocks. And BlackRock is directly, directly profiting from General Dynamics actions as part of the border militarization. Crazy. It is so crazy. It's mm -hmm. the more you look into BlackRock and you unfold it, you use like, oh, profiting off child detention too, I see. It's worse and worse it's why they have to divest it's yeah just to say no to taking money from terrible people you would think it's so easy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well maybe we should talk about your the online campaign and how successful that's been talk about it if you're watching now you are obviously a follower on facebook and you've been seeing our beautiful shareables about larry fink and blackrock and how they're connected LB connected to General Dynamics, these weapons manufacturers. That's me posting them all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we target them, we tag them, we're in their Facebook comments, we're in their Twitter mentions. They are annoyed at us in real life when we go to their office and online. As a social media manager, I'm sure whoever runs their social media is getting lots of notifications from us and I'm very proud about that. And mm -hmm. I think we have really great tactics online to get involved if there isn't a BlackRock office near you, or if you just can't make it out to do an action, there's codepink.org slash BlackRock. We'll show you 
all the ways you can get involved just by sending a letter to Larry Fink, sending a letter to the IRC to tell them to rescind their award to him. Because just collecting those signatures is really important for us when we deliver those petitions to the people in the office. When Ooh. I gave the petition of our Larry Fink petition to the BlackRock employee in Dallas, he was surprised that we had over 3,000 signatures. There's 73 pages worth of signatures that I gave this guy. And I said, I hope you read them all. I <laughs> don't know if he did. I couldn't even read through all of them before I delivered it because there's a lot of action behind this and there's a lot of people who want to get engaged if you're watching you haven't signed these petitions yet you haven't shared that Facebook link you haven't retweeted that tweet you can go do it it's so easy and it's all on our on website. our website you know I just wanted to just break the um break in a little bit and talk about how I mean what has been so why has the online campaign been so successful? What, what is it? What do you think it is? Because it's, it's been amazing what has happened with the online campaign um, around BlackRock. I think people are surprised that this company that they maybe haven't heard of before is, has billions in weapons manufacturers and has their hands in like child attention and the slaughter going on in Gaza and Palestine right now. You read about that, you want to do something about it. And maybe you can't go out to a BlackRock office near you. You can share this and inform some, one, some of your friends, some of your family. Like social engagement is an easy way to get involved and you can do it all on Code Pink. Right. You really can. Um, that's our online strategy, strategy, but this is a long-term campaign. Like I, even if they divest for more, there's still so much for us to do with them. There's so many more steps, so many more steps to take. What is our next big step, Nancy, as the campaign manager for this? What is, what's the next big thing? Right. Well, um, just to let you know, BlackRock employees that are listening in, um, our next big step is, um, is try to get some small wins, uh, such as building relationships with BlackRock shareholders who can influence change from within. Um, one thing I did not mention is, um, along with Amalgamated and Thrivent, we, there is a, another shareholder we're working with, and hopefully that'll be uh, our ticket into the next shareholders meeting um, to help influence change and help um, also get BlackRock to divest uh, from war. Uh, we're also going to continue to have an outside presence um, at the BlackRock offices. So, Mr. Via, if you're watching, I'll be coming to you at that San Francisco office soon. So um, we'll definitely do that. I find that that's pretty successful. Maybe we could do something creative like, you know, have a teach-in inside of one of the BlackRock offices. And then the postcard campaign is really kind of, it's, it's, um, it really, uh, um, is really risky. So actually sending the postcards to his house um, is really um, putting it out there, putting the campaign out there. So uh, if anyone is interested in receiving a pack of postcards, they can contact Kirsten at codepink.org. And then we're gonna continue to educate uh, the International Rescue Committee's donors um, on this year's John C. Uh, Whitehead Humanitarian Awardee, Larry Fink and continue to call on the IRC to rescind his, um, his award. We have a lot so those, of steps. Yeah, those are, those are some of the steps that come to mind quickly, but um, yeah, do you have any ideas for um, next steps for the online campaign? I think it's pretty fresh and it's doing really well. You know, I think we should keep doing more webinars like this. I think we should keep tweeting at as many people as possible everyone who's watching, you can go on tweet at BlackRock, just at BlackRock, super simple handle. Let them know you're watching. Let them know you're learning about what they're doing because they can't hide anymore. We're calling them out. <laughs> um, and I will post the links to all the ways you can get involved in the comments below and I'll post it in the bio of this video. Nancy, is there anything else you want to add about BlackRock or just what you're doing with Code Pink? Well, I really think BlackRock must divest from and stop investing in companies that sell weapons used in war and violence around the world and at home. BlackRock must divest from defense contractors that profit from child detention um, facilities. 
And yeah, just go to codepink.org slash black rock. Uh, definitely check out um, Divest from the War Machine uh, website as well. There's a lot of great uh, resources on that page. But yeah, this has been really great. It has been great. It's so good to have this conversation with you. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Don't forget to go to codepink.org slash BlackRock. Take action. Get out there. Keep fighting for peace. Peace. So peace. Bye, everyone.